Okay, tease away there, mumbled face. Okay, let's just get right to it. This is True Really News. It needs you to like, subscribe, and follow us. We're trying now, to grow a kingdom what, of followers. Whether you actually listen to us is up to you. Actually, nine out of ten doctors think you'd be crazy. <laughs> right. And the other one is. So, um, like, subscribe, and follow. Look at that. I wasn't even... What are you... What? You're pointing at your hand. Crazy one over there. Well, yeah, if you point to the left, that's me. Wait. (laughs) We're so well rehearsed. Oh, (laughs) no fast moves. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. Employees at a Mumbai-based Dream 11, which runs a fantasy sports platform, will have to pay a fine of 100,000 rupees, which is about 1,200 bucks American. Really? Dollars diving? It is. If they contact a colleague on their time off. So somebody takes Yeah, somebody takes a day off. So on my day off. And I call you to and say, you do hey, what you always do and call me, interrupt me or something important. Button. Exactly. It would cost me 1200 bucks. Who gets that? Do I, I get that? No, because call say. away. <laughs> I'm taking every day the way, off I got. We're moving to India. <laughs> the company makes it mandatory. I've seen the Simpsons. I can fake it. <laughs> the company makes it mandatory for workers to take at least a week off annually. So once a year oh, for a week. Yeah. You're even kicked out of the system. Yep. No Slack, no emails, no calls. Nope. 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 But it helps. Because otherwise, to... no, they wouldn't. Right. Right. They're, and I'm I'm they're really being here. We can't get people to work. Right. And there they can't get them to stop. So, Where's the happy medium? I remember I had a migraine. Like Liechtenstein would be the happy medium, bud? I had, uh, maybe a little farther I, east. Somebody involved in the Indo-European language set. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I had a migraine to beat all migraines and it might've been the last one that I had that was painful. And I was in, you've had migraines that aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you get the weird vision, the lady thing. Yeah. Yep. Now I get no pain. I just get a vis- the ocular. So how can you tell one si- Cause I look up and I see the ocular I mean, stuff you see things weird anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> I have this shouting distance relationship with yeah. reality. Thank you, John Hines. It goes back to the, you're weird. How would you know? <laughs> anyway, I was just down for the count and a certain salesperson from K one Oh two K one Oh two. When we were there, we, Kept, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, you were there. Brother. Kept calling me to ask me if I'd be in the next day. Would Jake Calhoun have to change his name? <laughs> Why? Well, they changed Lake Calhoun to something else. So, <laughs> Yeah, probably. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He'd be Jake Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. Oh, no, he wouldn't. <laughs> his, his wife was the sweetest gal ever. She was a great lady. Yeah. In any case, actually, she probably still is a great lady. Yeah, probably still is. Anyway, Anyway, carry on my wayward son. The company Dream Dream 11 believes this uninterrupted time allows Dreamsters to relax, recharge and come back ready to give their best. The fine is an eye catching way to let workers enjoy a quality break. And it's really interesting that they actually lock you out of the system for a week. You you can't get in. The scary part is I got a buck that says most people are at. So wherever they go for that week. Yep. And are a wreck. Oh, yeah. It's the second week where you get to unwind. They're wired to be at work, and this bothers them that they're not. Yep. And there you go. In a bid to retain talent, many other businesses, including Goldman Sachs Group, are allowing staff to take unlimited vacations. But a UK recruiting firm last year said it was going to scrap that policy. Because? Because? The perk made employees feel guilty and question how many days they were really supposed to take. Yeah, we are wired kind of that way. Well, if you don't tell us, the word we'll take what we can and then we'll feel bad about it. Groan keeps running through my head. Think for yourself, oh, you please. ink blots. What did we just decide the species was? Stupid. There you are. All right. See? I'm chastised. 
Really? You're taking I a thought day you were off Methodist. tomorrow. Don't call me. Now I've got to. <laughs> a lot. I will I mean, find I, you rupee after rupee. You do that. No, it's not a tab. <laughs> so from my lovely sister-in-law, Michelle. She is my favorite, by the way, middle sister-in-law. Oh, mine too. Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, actually, she's my favorite oldest sister. Wait. No, no, she's not the oldest. She'd be my... Well, I married the oldest. Yeah, she'd be the second sister-in-law. So she'd be... Yeah, because technically, um, Cindy would be older, but she married in. She's an outlaw like me. Anyway, Michelle thinks weird, which is yeah. one of the things we appreciate about this girl. And she's a PhD. <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Oh, um, it makes sense to me. I know a bunch of PhDs. They're all weird. No, no, not this kind of weird, though. They're, they're, most of the PhDs I know are Sheldon weird. Yes. Yeah, she's not. Okay. No. Yeah, I'll buy that. So here we are. She sent me this from Denver about the National Western Stock Show's Grand Champion Steer and Reserve Champion Steer. Who, and there are pictures, if you go to, to Nine News in <laughs> Denver. To Nine News in Denver. Oh. The National Western Stock Show. Hmm. Pursue me, Gibbis. Next, English. The National Western Stock Show. I'm speaking Welsh. The National Welsh. Western Stock Show's Grand Champion Steer and Reserve Champion Steer, because you have to have a pair. Of steers? What are you going to do know, with them? Bring? An air, it's like an air and a spare. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway. Air and a spare. The two march into the Brown Palace on Friday afternoon for tea. Yes. The 70. Mm-hmm. Two very large steers. How do it's they the, stick their pinkies out? I mean, it's the they don't have pinkies; they have hooves. You boozy. my point. The seventy seventh annual tradition brought the ribbon winning steers down a red carpet and into the legendary Denver Hotel's atrium lobby. Hotel guests and ticketed attendees, yes, people, people paid, paid for this yep. to watch yep. the steers' entrance from up to eight floors away on the balconies. While crowds stood outside in line that wrapped around the block for their turn to get a, a photo with the champions. Did or the, of the champions. They're not even in a picture with him. Did Move. the the uh did the steers um foul the uh That's where you go. Area? Yeah. Right well, yeah, they're gonna poop anytime they want. It's not just people in Denver that are a little bit off, guests from all over the world make reservations weeks, sometimes months in advance <laughs> for their guaranteed seat in the atrium. After their time as the stars of the Brown Palace, the two steers are then sold at the auction of junior champions at the stock show Friday night. So it's kind of like, guys, um, enjoy. Yeah, because your dinner on the hoof. Stan the Man was a 2023 grand champion steer. Sold for a record $200,000 to Ames Construction Company. The previous record was set oddly the year before. When the grand champion went for only 160 grand, there is actually a picture of these two big beasts in this glorious atrium with a Christmas tree behind them and mobs of people everywhere. <laughs> wow. Uh, the goal of the auction, by the way, um, is to encourage today's youth to seek a future in agriculture and to further their education. A majority of the winning bid prices go right to the the junior exhibitor. And a 10% of each bid is then donated to the National Western Scholarship Trust. It's one of the like steers. The Elks coming back to Capistrano or whatever one of the town is up north. <laughs> As the moose return to Frostbite Falls. <laughs> 77 times in a row, huh? One of the moose was overheard saying, Wow. We don't know what that was. We think it was a question. <laughs> What a way to go. Can you imagine? Just picture that in like a fancy hotel in Minneapolis. Well, I can. Do we have one? What's our fanciest hotel? You know, all the cool old ones are gone. <laughs> well, it is Minneapolis. They don't, <laughs> they don't believe in stuff. Yeah. Um, Maybe something out by the airport. No, no, <laughs> that's not it. That's not it. Nice try, though. See what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So my guess is. Well, we don't have Grand Champ Grand Champion. <laughs> anyway, you were saying? I was saying this is a terrible way to die. In a disaster known I'm as I'm gonna have to ask you if there's a good way to die. <laughs> yes. Because I know I, I saw a Serenity. Sleep. I saw Serenity. This is a good death. No. 
<laughs> I'm oh, betting, dying. Yeah. On a sword. <laughs> I'm going to be deaf. This I is not me with a sword, Mal. Can you How weird is it? that? <laughs> yeah. How weird? A sword. <laughs> This disaster is known as the Great Molasses Flood of 09. It occurred, it occurred in 1919. Oh, the Great Molasses Flood of 19. 19. When a container holding 80 million liters of molasses collapsed slowly and, and, no, <laughs> and sent a flood of the well, substance was was into the North End neighborhood of the city of Boston. Uh oh. The flood of the sticky substance caused the death of over 20 people. And that's also where all the R's were lost. <laughs> and into, and injured, those were all the people who could say R's. And injured dozens of individuals. The sugary, earthy scent of molasses stayed in the city for years afterward. Yeah. What is that smell? I don't know. Are you hungry? <laughs> well, the other thing I was thinking, I think the root beer people must have been so irritated. Where'd our molasses go? Oh, it's 20 people are bogarting it. What the heck? And in January, it would have been very slow. Ooh. Quick run. Well, walk. Yeah. Just, well, as a matter of fact, yeah. listen, in 20 minutes, Uber. be out of here, would you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Michelle's second email of the, where to go? Oh, I hate these guys that keep switching ads on their stuff. In Coon Rapids, Minnesota, neighbors in a mobile ha mobile ham park? Hmm. Well, First if, steer is if now ham. Coon Rapids crashed into Ham Lake, sure. Neighbors in a... Then it'd be Ham Rapids <laughs> or, or something else. Neighbors in a Coon Rapids mobile park home, mobile home park, mobile park home, whatever, are battling a Boyd. They say the lone turkey appeared in their park around Thanksgiving of 2021 and has not left since, becoming more and more aggressive as months go on. Said resident Rachel Gross, this turkey has literally taken over our life. Huh? So she lives in fear of going outside, thanks to her neighbor, the wild turkey, who seems to have taken a liking to her property. Give him some of the whiskey. He'll be happy. Turkey attacks me every single day, follows me, goes up my stairs, tries to get into the house. When I leave in my car, it follows the car. It's implanted on her. The wild turkey has attacked people, packed the tires, and chased cars. It Emily thinks Ashton it's a dog. About, Emily Ashton's a little bit worried about the kids in the mobile home park. Oh Kids will walk to the bus stop in the morning. I have to come out and help them. But now they're smart and they carry sticks. They stick it to that foul. The two say they've reached out to the DNR, who offered them suggestions, including... <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your help. Ready? Yeah. Including take away all the bird feeders. Mm-hmm. Uh, chop down branches where the turkey nests. Mm-hmm. So they've taken down their bird feeders. And they've chopped down the branches. But a few others still have them up inside the park. My thought is, if I were the DNR, and this is just me, if I were the DNR, I would tell them about a week before Thanksgiving, kill the bird, pluck it, gut it, and happy Thanksgiving. Yep. Apparently, being in Minnesota, the DNR can't say that. I don't understand why. Oh, good Lord. Of course, by now, it's you know been around a while, and it's ornery, so it's probably a tough old bird. <laughs> <laughs> we get flocks of them coming through our yard all the time, and the flock keeps getting bigger. I think it's a family. What do we do? Kill the turkey? No, 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 no. Just, you know, take away all the stuff you have up. You know, inconvenience you. Yeah, well, you know. It's Turkey's Minnesota. got rights. It's in Minnesota. A brick has rights. This is true. Really news. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.